What's up guys, Doug Polk here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a high-stakes hand from the Triton No Limit Hold'em Cash Game Series over in Madrid. This one's a spicy one, and when I saw I knew we were going to have to break it down. Let's go ahead and jump into the action. So you're yeah. not too bad. <laughs> and there's me too, and everybody knows me that it's like, meat. Yeah. Is it? No. 3-6. Bro, why do you have so many hands? <laughs> why are you always ruined? <laughs> if Tom can win this hand with seven deuce, yeah, now I have many fans. 10 gay bounty from everyone. <laughs> nah, I win one title. Wait, 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 he didn't even go yet. I won. Today. Yeah. Oh, everybody's drunk now. Okay. Yes. First right on title. No shit. Yeah. But it's my fourth right on. A three bet and a call. Our hand begins at a very reasonable 1k, 2k, 4k euro game, with the straddle being Tony G to 4,000 euros. Also, the players had just agreed to the seven deuce game. If you're not familiar with the seven deuce game, essentially all of the players have to pay a penalty to a player that wins a hand with seven deuce, and it incentivizes players to try and play seven deuce aggressively and win big pots because they're going to get bounties on the side. As a side note, I actually think the seven deuce game is a kind of bad game because basically it changes poker to be when you're bluffing, you should really try to use seven deuce. And a lot of your hands you might want to bluff with normally, like draws tend to just not like to bet because they'll just, you, you just rather bet when you have seven deuce. So I think it's a little one dimensional. That said, a lot of players do enjoy playing the game. If people are playing at the table, I'll jump in there, but just something to be aware of. If you're playing a seven deuce game and you're bluffing frequently with other hands, good luck. Anyway, back to the action. The action folds to Tom Dwan, the cutoff, who looks down at seven deuce offsuit. You're going to certainly want to raise every time you have seven deuce when you're playing the seven deuce game. Uh, now over to Rui on the button, looks down at eight seven. This is a pure fold hand, no way about it. In fact, it's especially bad to play in this game because when you have a seven, it's less likely your opponent is bluffing. And you can have lots of other hands like seven deuce or maybe other hands that want to bluff through that preflop, suited connectors, things like that. This is a pretty clear fold. That said, Rui has other plans and three bets to 36,000 euros to go. The blinds get out of the way and the action's back over on Tom Dwan with seven deuce. And this is a pretty key point. If you take nothing away from this video, I want you guys to know this. If you play the seven deuce game, I feel like a lot of players, they just keep raising and raising seven deuce preflop. And certainly you want to do that sometimes, but you want to take your seven deuces and you want to balance them into different parts of your of the game. I know that sounds silly why are we balancing our seven deuce, but you want to sometimes call an open with seven deuce. You want to three about seven deuce. You want to sometimes call a three about seven deuce. You want to sometimes four about seven deuce. When you have seven deuce, you need to be pretty crafty on which place you put it in because then you can have bluffs in all these places and you can really try to use seven deuce when you are bluffing to win that bounty on the side. Tom Dwan with seven deuce here, he can call the three bet or he can go ahead and four bet. I really don't mind either way. It will depend on the size of the bounty. I'm not exactly sure what it is in this hand, but he does decide to call and let's take a flop. Yeah, but uh, wow. it's I good. Have, you know, I would have thought, <laughs> thought you had People want to become like me, businessman, yeah. winning a title. Of course, of course. Next I want one too. Two jets. Uh, next stop. Win, yeah. win, win. Winfrey said. Uh, July, July. Ooh, 30k July. C bet from Rui Cow. Okay. Tom with just a seven deuce. <laughs> has not laid it down yet. See, so he thinks I'm making a move because Rui Cow plays every I single hand. I think we should stop playing short deck. Okay. Huh? I start. Yeah. How about we swap? Okay. I mean, you, you teach me. No, 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 no. Hey, Every day in our game, I'm okay. not letting him improve. Health, I mean. A raise to 126,000 euro of seven deuce, ready to show everyone. <laughs> okay. Maybe not, he's thinking. If he could take I mean, this down. Maybe. But Rui Cow has not folded yet. Losing. Is he wondering why Tom would raise on the Ace Crew 5 rainbow instead of trying to slow play against? Oh my god, he's calling with 8 high. Before we continue, I just want to let you know I am currently playing heads up for $100,000 with Bill Perkins at the Lodge. If you want to check it out, you can do so. There's a link in the description below. My heads up challenge to the world has round 1 underway right now over on the Lodge YouTube channel. 
The flop comes ace, queen, five, rainbow, and Duan checks it over to Rui here where he has seven high and Rui just has eight high. So both players have certainly bricked here, but these hands are pretty hard to hit most flops anyway. Rui Kao now decides to go ahead and bet 30,000 into 80 something thousand here on the flop. Um, this is a pretty adventurous bet, I would say. He has very little backdoor draws. He will have other hands he can bluff with, like 7 deuce, or if he threw bet king 10 suited, jack 10 suited, uh, king jack suited. I would rather bet hands like 6 7 of hearts. This is the kind of hand where I think I'd probably check back and give up. And it's also worth noting that having a club, not a great card either, because you don't block any of the backdoor flush draw floats. So this is one of those kinds of hand you just kind of give up. And if it checks down, maybe you take a stab. Rui's got other intentions though. And he goes ahead and fires the flop here, betting a little over one third pot into it. And the action's back over to Tom Duan. With the seven deuce here, I think you just have to mainly let it down. Once in a blue moon, if you want to go for a call or a raise, I think that's kind of okay. You should probably work in that in. But the problem with seven deuce is that when you have seven deuce, it's now way less likely they have seven deuce because you block both the seven and the deuce and you have nothing in terms of showdown value and you're out of position and it's a three bet pot. Look, I like a lose play as much as the next guy. I'm not saying you should never make a move here, but I would probably look to almost always let this one go. Tom has other ideas though, and he decides to bump it up 121,000 to go. I will say this is a board. I think it doesn't make sense to have too, too many raises. It would make sense to raise here on the flop if you have a hand like ace, queen, or pocket fives for value. So there are some hands that could make sense to raise. But outside of those two hands, there's simply not many hands that like to raise here. I'm not sure how much value you would lose by having no raises on this flop at all. It might not be a very much here. It might be maybe a small portion. Either way, on a board like this, you shouldn't have many raises because the three better is much more likely to have an ace in their hand. And of course, they're way more likely to have hands like aces and queens or ace five suited. There's just a lot more hands here in the three betters range that are good than there are in the caller. When that's the case, it can be fine just to call with all your hands to try and protect your range. But I don't mind having a very small ra range of hands that do raise. So I guess clip notes here from Tom's raise. I think it should be slightly smaller. I think it should be more like 95 to 100,000. Uh, and if you are going to raise, you should very rarely use this hand and mainly look to use hands like ace, queen, pocket fives, and hands like the king, jack, king, ten suited kind of uh, suited Broadway hands that can make the nuts on different runouts and give you some board coverage on those runouts. Back over to Rui. And honestly, guys, at this point, I'm really not sure what to say anymore. This is clearly a fold, but it's been clearly a fold for everyone this whole time. So why would this be any different? Rui must be thinking... Tom Dwan is full of goddamn shit, so it's time to make a move and go for the smooth call. I will say in position here for Rui, I think I like not having many raises. When your opponent raises the flop, they're kind of saying they have uh, ace, queen, or fives, or they're bluffing. When you have a seven, it's less likely they're bluffing. Uh, so I don't mind mainly just calling here on the flop, although I'm sure the solver would have some bet three bets and would probably like to bet three bet with hands like ace queen, maybe some ace king every now and then to deny, as well as possibly some of the hands like ace five suited or pocket queens. So um, Rui has other ideas. He's going to float. We're just fully playing street poker at this point. And let's take a turn that basically can't hit either of these guys. He doesn't have anything. He's got to do seven this time. I don't understand. And the turn is an ace. I have to play tank. <laughs> no flush draw. How much you want to do this? Technically, it could 400. be like 2 7 versus 2 yeah. 7. Ball. 130. You have about 500. 400,000 behind. One, about two, a bit less three, than 400. Four. 400. Wait, 400? A little bit less is what you say. Can Tom find a bet mm. with just seven deuce on this board that is supposed to hit the three better? Better, better structure here. Oh, this structure. Ooh, really drama. <laughs> <laughs> go to sleep. Oh my, he's reaching for chips. Huh? Start shooting all in. <clears throat> I'll turn this aside to do, to do a few all in. Do a few all in? Yeah, yeah, I've been trying. <laughs> I've been trying. I just need a couple of two sevens, you know? <laughs> like. <laughs>
Do you yeah, know who is it? Ah, yeah, fuck! I voted New Seven! <laughs> Yeah, you said that already. It's actually okay not to play it. Under the it's gun. not. It's not yeah. that big a disadvantage. Yeah. Under the gun. Huh? Yeah. 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 Half pot bet, and Rui Cal no, no, calls no, 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 of eight no. seven high, <laughs> thinking that <laughs> Tom just, has got yeah, nothing. Curious. The turn comes in the ace pairing the board, which is a bit of an interesting card. Overall, it's better for Rui than it is for Tom because he has way more aces that would bet the flop. There's no way Tom's going to check raise with a hand like ace jack or ace 10 or ace 4 suited on the flop because you would just be bloating a pot uh, you know, in a deeper stack hand where when you do get action, you're beat and you want to just kind of keep their bluffs in their range. So this card definitely helps Rui's range more than Tom Duan's, but Tom can still have ace queen and he can still have pocket fives and he can still have some hands that want to bluff. If you're going to check raise and then barrel, it probably makes the most sense to barrel with hands that are like king jack of hearts, where you block uh, not just ace king, but also ace jack suited, which might be a little more likely to be at preflop. You also don't want to have a seven or a deuce because, of course, you're playing the seven deuce game. Uh, maybe a hand like jack ten of spades also makes some sense. There's a few bluffs that could maybe make sense every now and then. But typically speaking, this is a spot now where you're not going to continue with a lot of hands, but when you do, you're going to bet a, a geometric size and keep it very bluffy between your, blo your boats and your bluffs. Even though you have a lot of boats here, or at least some boats, you don't want to trap too much because when you check raise the flop, you're saying your hand is strong and it doesn't really make sense to stop telling that story. If you have a hand like fives, you definitely want to bet the turn and jam the river. If you have a hand like ace queen, I don't mind put, pumping the brakes. And if you have a hand like queen, you should value bet because it's a little more likely that they just have an ace. Anyway, Tom decides it's time to take this to barrel town because you're playing the seven deuce game. And if you've come this far, you have to keep telling your story. He bets 160k here. I think this bet's a little bit too big. If, if Rui calls here, he's going to have 240 behind. So he's basically going to make this river bet smaller than the turn bet. Uh, I really think he should be betting more like 120, 130k here. Uh, to keep that river bet a little more consistent with the size of the pot. Over to Rui, and now, uh, you know, he's got eight high. I can't think of any worse hand he could possibly have. He blocks seven deuce. But but at this point, I'm thinking maybe Rui has some kind of read. Maybe he's deduced something about possibly the way Thompson looking at the cards or looking at the chips or the way he threw his chips in or the timing. There's something going on here that we don't know about now because – Calling here is just simply not a thing, you know, and every now and then that does happen on streams as we know from last year, but it's just not a thing. You have to fold. You block the seven deuce. I mean, what are we doing, right? I mean, this is real money poker, I assume, I think. Um, so Rui, he's got a read. He's going with it and he makes a call and let's take a river. And he's going to steal it from him. James is investing like 400k <laughs> to win seven. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It works. <laughs> it's just a work. <laughs> Free flop is a little scary. 655,000 euro in the middle. One's got seven deuce. One's got eight high who's oh, look, floated the flop oh. and floated the turn. Every other minute we have to oh, man. Pot, you know? Stop. Now it's starting to get tense in here as they realize what's going on at the table. Can Tom fire one more time? He gives up. The river comes a king with both players still having collectively a pair of sevens if you put all four of their cards together and start playing Pot Limit Omaha. What's important to look at here is the schedule for the Triton Poker High Rollers. It seems that they're going to be in North Cyprus from May 10th to 25th, and then London from the 27th to the August 10th. So plenty of opportunities to play in games like this where you're going to find some of the toughest competition in the world. When you're looking at an event like this, what's important is to check out the flight prices because how much it costs to get there will make a significant impact. Right, it's from Austin. Will make a significant impact on your overall profitability because when the straddle is 4,000 euros, it definitely matters that the first class flight might be 3,000 bucks. Three, four, the straddle. Every single dime counts. And then from there, we want to look at who's going to be in the lineup. It does appear to have poker players, so.
way, back to our hand, which I guess I'm qualified to commentate on. Tom now has a decision to make with seven high. If he goes all in, he will certainly win, I think. Uh, maybe he won't. Maybe Rui's put him on seven deuce and knows his cards, basically. So he could check or jam or I don't know, man. Give up. What am I supposed to say? What do you want from me? Gives the pot to Rui Cow. Double checks the cards. This is the craziest hand I've seen. He goes all in. Two seven. Two seven, right? Yeah. Why did you check then? Because he f***ing snap called me if I show. Anyway, Tom decides to give it up. And then Rui decides to go all in with a little WSOP style jam. Double hander here. And Tom has to lay down the seven deuce and thinks that Rui had it. But unfortunately, he is going to get the bad news. Moral of the story here, guys, is save up those small stakes buy-ins. Because all you need is to have about 10 million euros to be able to play in this game. And you're looking at a pretty great spot. Because not everyone knows about the hidden art of having a pair or a draw. Poker, man. Poker is alive and it is well.